take that another day another trip to the goodwill bins join me as i rummage through some bins try to stay out of the shrapnel of other bin rummagers and see what treasures we can find at the goodwill outlet Chuck the hat. over to the bin that I'm in. I just moved. Oh my gosh, I need this. I'm not, I'm not dealing with that.
1945. We're gonna take that. That's German. That was sitting right on top. So that the zip chimp, he can bring in anywhere between, we'll just say 50, and I saw a listing for 100. Of course, that is in great condition, but mine has the hat and the different shirt. Then I found this thing. It has a 1945 date on it. I don't think it's a re... I don't know why they would make a reproduction of this bag, whatever it is. Let's take a look. It's material, IMG. Corpse material, KMV, and then inside, oh geez, as I get it all dirty. Um, where was that? P and O F R, 1945. See, the string looks new though. So it could be a repro, I have no, no idea. Is a Goodwill bin outlet trip ever really calm? This time it was. I think a little bit calmer than my first time there. When you get that first rush of people in, it's, it's always a madhouse because they want to get to a bin, want to dig, they want to see what is there. But somehow my best finds were actually found on top of the pile, not in the bottom, on the side, back, below, but just on top. It's like either people push them to the top or they decided, you know what, I don't want them. So. I would gladly take them and that's what I did. First we have good old Zip. Um, this is a chimp. It is a rubber faced toy doll. I know some of them were made by, I think it's Rushton. I don't know where his tag is. Um, he was just on the top of the bin. So hey, coming home with me bud. He is a little bit different than some of the other listings that I've seen. He has his suspenders, he also has a hat, and he has his banana. There was one that had the same outfit with the hat that sold for like $130. I'm sure the condition was pristine. This one, not like that. You have some wear to the paint. His face will need to be cleaned up. But he's a little bit different because he does have his jumpsuit romper, whatever you want to call it, the banana, and the hat. So we shall see. I paid $10.24, I think, for everything, or $0.23. Cents. So not a lot of money spent. And if I can get, you know, between $30, $50, I don't know if I'll get 100 for him, but I'll make my money back plus profit, I think, just off of, all, just off of the little chip. He does need to be cleaned, but that will be easy to do. Then the other interesting piece that I found was this. Again, just laying at the top. Most of my weight probably came from this bag. So it's KMV, corpse material, and then you also have IMG, material de corpse. Inside, <clears throat> it has P and OFR 1945. I did look up this KMV and the IMG and it seems like this is a type of Swiss ration bag used um, 1945 World War II. It's very odd because this bag is in really nice shape like the string, the cord. That's why I'm wondering if it was a reproduction but they're really going to make reproductions of this it seems like this is a very odd, very random item to reproduce. Unless maybe it was for like a reenactment. I'm not sure what you're going to be reenacting with a rash of bag prop movie prop set. I don't know. So if any of you have seen this before or are familiar or even know what this is, I do have to look this up P and O F R that might be able to provide some insight. When I looked up what I could, I only found one website, the person had posted a picture, and theirs was a bit different. It was a different material, almost like a laundry bag material, 
and then it had the Nazi swastika, the eagle with the swastika, which someone said that was added. So it, the bag would have more value than just a Swiss ration bag. But still, it just, it, even if it is a reproduction, it has a really neat look to it. And if it's not a reproduction, then I think finding this at the top of a Goodwill bin was a good find, especially if it is from 1945, World War II, found at the bins. So we got that. I did buy some clothing. I didn't really show it. We have some, I don't know if it's Lulu Row, Lulu Mon, I don't know, but we have Jack and Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas. This one is Lulu Row. A large extra large so again nightmare before Christmas I didn't look these up I know that they have had their place in the Sun other time in the Sun with the Lulu Row Lulu Mon you know, some of these could go for a lot of money these look like they're little kids I don't know what it's worth I mean honestly what did this cost me like 10 cents so it's, it's no big loss and I actually my best friend's little daughter might want these. We're big fans of Nightmare Before Christmas. I picked up some golf, not golf, it's a Olympic shirt, Atlanta at 1996. Neat look to it. It's not worth that much. I believe I saw one on eBay for $21.99 or best offer. So this could probably just be a flea market piece. Take it to the flea market, ask a couple dollars, make some money back. Um, bought a grumpy shirt for me being a grumpy is my full-time job not really but it's just it's a funny look funny look flea, good flea market shirt and good lounging around the house drinking tea getting work done shirt and last but not least I did buy this book it's Looney Tunes iron iron-on transfers originally it was $16.95 I thought this would be good. Lulu, not Lulu, Looney Tunes are kind of um, coming back in style now. And when I, I did look this up on eBay, and it was worth, I think someone sold it for $7. Not awful. I don't know if there's one of these up there right now, but you figure you have how many patterns in here, iron on transfers, and that someone could easily make their own shirts by this. So. This, I don't know what she charged me for this. This probably, this probably was a quarter because it was a soft, soft cover. They charge their books by hard covers are 50 cents. Soft covers are a quarter. So, you know, a quarter. You can't go wrong for that. But yes, my best finds uh, was Zip the Chimp and that interesting bag. And again, if any of you have any knowledge about that bag, let me know. Really a neat piece. So for those items, I didn't have to dig at the bottom I didn't have to, you know, sift my way through things that people were throwing on top of the bin. I merely had to walk by a bin and pick up something that was on top that someone either discarded or they threw on there. You know, maybe that is a great way to rummage at the bins, see what people put back. It was still fun. I still would like to get there. It'd be good to get there maybe once a week just to see. You know, I do want to take different methods to sourcing at the bins. You just gotta try and see you know, what you get. Perhaps they'll be first in line. That's probably doubtful. There seems to be a whole family that kind of has that down pat. And I think they're there almost every day or a couple times a week. You do have your regulars there. Well, I become a regular there, most likely not, but it's still fun to go to, fun to see what there is, and you really never know what you're going to find. And that's a part, the fun part of the hunt for a treasure. I hope you enjoyed this Goodwill Outlet bins haul. I found a few cool things, saved some things, and hopefully make a decent profit on some things too. So thanks for watching. Me and Zip here are probably going to go make some tea, get some listing done, hopefully do some editing for videos, and see what else we have in store. So I hope you have a great weekend, whatever you may be doing, whether it's picnics, getting ready to go back to school, or enjoying your long weekend from work. So thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day, and I will see you all next time.